Hi friends, today I propose to take up measurements of radiophysical values, namely direct and alternating voltage and current. If this theme is interesting for you, then please leave comments and in the future we will try to assemble a simple multimeter on Arduino. First, let's recall the physics course. There are two methods for measuring physical values, direct and indirect. At the direct method, we immediately measure the value, for example, the length of our soldering iron in centimeters. At the indirect method, we measure the value that is associated with the desired value by some known function. Therefore, having measured one, we can convert it to what we need. For example, you can use Ohm's law to calculate the current by measuring the voltage across the resistor. The Arduino Nano platform can only measure a voltage in the range from 0 to 5 volts. This means that all other values must be converted into voltage, then measured and recalculated. Let's start with a simple one, measuring DC voltage. Let's write the code or rather open a standard example. Pin A0 will be the analog to digital converter input. As a result of the transformation, we get the value of the digital code corresponding to the real voltage. How does it work? The ADC has some voltage reference, for example, 5 volts. The second important parameter is resolution. In our case, this is 10 bits. That is, the range from 0 to 5 volts is divided into 1024 equal pieces. So, our digital code can take values from 0 to 1023. Dividing 5 volts by the number of pieces, we get the size of the piece in real volts and then knowing the number of pieces, we will restore the real value in volts. First, we need to calibrate the ADC. By default, the reference voltage is taken from the supply voltage, but it can vary. This has a negative influence at the measurement accuracy. Therefore, we measure the voltage on the 5 volt and 3.3 volt lines with the multimeter. Then we enter the value of the reference voltage into the program and change the voltage recalculation code. Now we can run the program and connect pin A0 to the 3.3 volt line to make sure the ADC readings are correct. If you need to measure voltages in the range from 0 to 5 volts, then the problem is solved. But if we want to expand the range, then a simple resistive voltage divider comes to solve the task. Let's take three resistors. 1, 10, and 100 kilo ohm. We will measure their exact values and enter them into our program. We get two dividers in one. If you get the voltage from the first point, then the input voltage will weaken by one amount, and when get from the second, by another. We get two ranges, up to 50 volts and up to 500 volts. For example, we connect it to the first point and supply about 10 to 20 volts. Of course, we must add to the program the recount of the measured value to the original. Knowing the exact resistance, values is easy. Great, it works! Do you want your homemade products to be the same as the factory ones? Then you need high-quality printed circuit boards, which PCBWay will produce for you at affordable prices. Just download the source Gerber files from the company's website, select the options you need, pay for the order, and soon your boards will be ready. The complexity, number of layers, and board sizes can be anything. PCBWay often holds contests and sweepstakes. Follow the news to keep track of the events. We were personally convinced of the quality. Try it too. The link is in the description. Our ADC cannot measure negative voltages, and here we will be helped by an operational amplifier. For example, a dual op amp LM358. We connect according to the non-inverting buffer circuit and mix the half of the reference voltage. How does it work? Consider the case with two voltage sources. One is constant and equal to 5 volts, the other changes from minus 5 volts to plus 5 volts. We connect them through the same resistors. If the voltage at the second source is zero, then we have a simple divider by 2 and get 2.5 volts at the output. 
If the voltage at the second source is minus 5 volts, then the two sources will compensate each other and the output will be zero. But if the voltage at the second source is 5 volts, then the output will be 5 volts. In the general case, Milman's theorem is used here, according to which it is possible to calculate the voltage common for all branches. In our case, the total voltage of the circuit will be known, but the input voltage will need to be calculated using this formula. The value of R4 should be approximately equal to the resistance between the output from the divider and ground. So for a range of 50 volt, we set 10 kilo ohm, and for a range of 500 volt, 1 kilo ohm. Now the nominal zero signal is set at 2.5 volt, and we can measure negative voltages. Let's check. Everything works. An important point should be noted. An ideal voltage meter should have infinite resistance because the greater the resistance of the device connected in parallel to the load, the less current through it and therefore the less effect on the circuit. Now let's go on to measuring AC voltage. This is what a 50 Hz sinusoidal voltage looks like. The maximum deviation of the sign from the zero is called the amplitude voltage. However, in addition to it, there is an RMS voltage value. This parameter more correctly reflects the load efficiency of the voltage. Therefore, it is customary to indicate and measure it. It is calculated as the root of the sum of the squares of the counts divided by the time. If you do this, you can write true RMS on the multimeter box with a clear conscience. But it can be done easier, because in this mode, usually measured the sinusoidal form voltage with a frequency of 50 to 60 Hz, then you can simply measure the amplitude value and divide it by the square root of 2. It's exactly the right dependence if you have sign form signal. Well, since we are using the Arduino platform, we will use a code from the library to measure the RMS value. We have already done everything with hardware. In the description, you will find links to all sketches and circuits. Let's check. It's OK. In this box is a transformer with four windings. They are switched by toggle switches, changing the output voltage. Now let's go to the measurements of current. You guessed it. The first, the current needs to be converted to voltage. When measuring voltage, we try to make the resistance of the voltmeter as large as possible to reduce its influence on the circuit. When measuring the current, the ammeter is connected in the circuit in series. This means that it must have a minimum resistance to reduce its influence on the circuit. According to Ohm's law, the current flowing through the resistance creates a certain voltage drop across it. For example, we connect some load through one ohm resistor. When current flows through the resistor, we have a voltage drop across it and we need to measure this voltage. It is clear that in order to get a voltage drop of 1 volt, you need a current of 1 ampere, and for a current of 1 milliampere, we get only 1 millivolt. To amplify small values, we will use the second half of the op amp. I connected it as a buffer, but if you are going to measure the drop across a low value resistor, a non-inverting amplifier circuit is better suited. In my case, we can measure the current from a few milliamps to almost 5 amps. Now we will measure the voltage by the Arduino Nano and divide it by the resistance, the exact value of which is measured with the multimeter. We write the code, check it, everything works fine. By the way, using RMS voltage, you can calculate the alternating current through the load. A lot of cheap multimeters can't measure this. To do this, let's complicate the circuit by adding a constant 2.5 volts offset, just like we did when measuring voltage. We use two resistors, for example, 150 kilo ohm each. We measure the voltage, multiply it by 2, since it is obtained from the divider by 2. Then divide this by the resistance value and get the true RMS current through the load. It is worth noting that this approach is good for one-time current measurements and if you need to constantly monitor it, it is better to use special microcircuits. 
Their work is based on the whole effect and can measure both direct and alternating current. And most importantly, the use of such microcircuits will provide electrical isolation from your circuit with the measured contacts. Note that it is advisable to secure the microcontroller inputs using 5.5 supersessors so that the input voltage never exceeds this value. And during experiments, before turning on Arduino, I advise you always to check the voltage with a multimeter or oscilloscope. Friends, I hope you enjoyed the video. In the next part, we will go to the measurements of the resistance and voltage drop across a diode and try to assemble all this into a full-fledged simple multimeter. Please don't forget to rate this video and share with friends. That's all for today. I say goodbye until we meet again. With you was Kasyan TV.